Previously on Microsoft Windows Retrospective, we talked about Windows 2.0 and Windows 3.0, which were both major improvements. Windows 2.0 introduced full multitasking, while Windows 3.0 had a new design, some multimedia capabilities, and it was the first version of Windows that was critically acclaimed. So, we had Windows 1.0, 2.0 and 3.0. Now guess what versions on Windows we are talking about today. If you think next Windows version is Windows 4.0, um, can you look at the title please? Did you read it? Good. Roll the intro. So, without further waiting, let's install Windows 3.1. If you watched the previous episodes of this series, you probably know what we need to do. The first part of setup process is pretty similar to the one on Windows 3.0. And now actually, I mean, we have two options. Express setup, where the setup will make decisions in, set in setting up Windows and custom setup where we actually control how Windows is set up. As with previous versions of Windows, we will upgrade our PC. Now it's copying files from the floppy disk that we need to insert. And again, like on previous versions of Windows, we have entered the graphical version of setup. Now we enter our name and company. I'll just put the username here. Then uh, it asks us what programs should Windows set up, and also if it should uh, set up the printer. We'll just uh, select everything here. Now we put the other floppy disks. And finally select the reboot option. So after the reboot, uh, we can enter Windows 3.1 by typing some cool command that you probably know. It's Sven, by the way. And uh, we booted in. You could now actually clearly see the boot screen. And uh, I mean at first glance Windows 3.1 didn't change uh, that much really. And that mindset continues for the other parts of the operating system. But again it added some very important features that are still used today. You could probably see that a new folder was added, startup folder, and it is empty. That is because if we put some program in the folder, for example Minesweeper, and then I restart this PC, it will start when we enter Windows. And there it is. Speaking about the Minesweeper, it replaced Reversi. And I mean you probably know what Minesweeper is, you probably played it. And like Solitaire, it is a really iconic game for Windows. Let's see if I can win. Ah, dang it. Well, I tried. We can also move the icons whenever we want on the desktop. Now, how cool is that? And if we go to the Accessories folder, we have new programs like Object Packager, Character Map, Media Player and Sound Recorder. If I enter into character map, it lets us use symbols that we can get on keyboard. So like I can select some symbols here, then I click copy, and if I go to the some writing program, like write, and then I paste it, I mean it doesn't look the same, that's probably because write doesn't support those characters. On the topic of write, true type fonts were introduced. Now you're maybe asking, why is that so important? Well, this new font system made making fonts easier and more precise. And with media player and sound recorder, multimedia capabilities were introduced, although they first appeared on Windows 3.0 with multimedia additions. Edition. <laughs> uh, now the control panel added some new icons like drivers, sound, and we can enable and change the system sounds. 
because Windows 3.1 actually had system sounds, like startup sound and shutdown sound. But I mean it wasn't the first, Windows 3.4.0 with multimedia additions, addition <laughs> had it again. Uh, ok, let me change the wallpaper. Oh god, uh, I won't use that man, you know what, Windows logo, it can't be a vo bad wallpaper if you can Windows logo on it. Let's show it in its full glory. Ooh, very nice. New things that were added were screensavers. We can select our screensaver here and test it. Okay, it's uh, lagging a bit. Very interesting. And this would appear on my screen if I didn't uh, touch anything on my PC for about two minutes. Uh, how about this one? This one looks pretty cool. And I mean that's pretty much everything. But you know what I should do? Hmm, well, I could uh, remain the R tag folder to things. Uh, I would, okay, there we go. Oh, I forgot, uh, Windows 3.1 was actually the first version of Windows that added Registry Editor. And I mean, as you can see, it took nothing compared uh, to Registry Editors on modern operating systems, but hey, this one is way simpler and I won't touch anything a bit because I don't want to break Windows. And if you go to about program manager, we can see that this is actually Windows 3.1. Wow, who would have guessed? Windows 3.1 is pretty successful. It sold about 3 million copies in its first two months of release. It had a lot of versions. For, for example, we have language versions like Windows for Eastern Europe and Windows J. Then Windows 3.11 that just added some bug fixes. Windows 3.2, a Chinese version of Windows 3.1 and Windows for Workgroups 3.1 and 3.11. This is actually the last version of Windows that needed DOS pre-installed in order to install it. And uh, like in Windows 3.0, we close the program manager or we click exit Windows and uh, that's it, we're back to DOS. If you may remember, Microsoft's success in the OS market came with the joint release of the IBM PC and MS-DOS in the year 1980. Of course, they couldn't rely always on DOS, so in the August of uh, 1985, Microsoft and IBM signed a joint development agreement, which meant that uh, they will both uh, develop a new operating system, which will be a graphical replacement to DOS. Their new operating system was named OS2, catered towards the enterprise market. There was a small problem though. <laughs> Microsoft and IBM had significant differences in their marketing strategies. Microsoft wanted OS2 to be available for all PCs, but I mean IBM just wanted to drive sales of its own hardware. Also, IBM's and Microsoft's programmers always complained about each other. With the hiring of uh, Dave Cutler, Microsoft successfully created NTOS2, which was based on a new, new technology kernel that could support multiple processor architectures. It should have been version 3.0 of OS2, but with the critical success of Windows 3.0, Microsoft cut their ties with IBM because they saw their future in Windows. They reworked NTOS2 into their first 32-bit version of Windows, Windows NT 3.1, which would be targeted towards businesses, while the DOS-based Windows would be targeted towards the average consumer. So, time to install Windows NT 3.1, and un unlike previous versions of Windows, we actually don't need DOS in order to install it. 
All I need to do is to insert the floppy disk and then restart the PC. And there we go, no commands needed. And the installation process uh, is kind of same, so we just continue, select custom setup. Now it's scanning for our drivers, I mean actually it isn't the same. Uh, for example, here it found my CD-RAM drive. Now it shows us installed partitions. I'll need to create a new one because uh, the DOS one is too small. Now we can format uh, the drive as NTFS and FAT. Actually, this was the first version on Windows that introduced the NTFS file system, which is uh, way better than FAT, and we still, I mean, use it today. But uh, I'll select FAT because, I mean, well, you'll see later. In next episode. Now it is formatting the drive. Now it asks us where do we want to install Windows NT, we will just press enter and now it's copying all files to hard disk. Now we press ctrl all delete and remove all floppy disks. After the reboot we... Uh, setup cannot install it with current processor. Set can't continue. Yeah. No worries, uh, I have a solution. We'll just edit the file to trick operating system into thinking that we have a supported processor. And uh, let's try the floppy disk part again. And then the editing part. I didn't save it. Are you kidding me? I didn't. Wow! <laughs> Can this be over? Yes, finally! Oh my God! Uh, okay, I'm <laughs> getting a bit ahead of myself. Finally, we can continue with the setup. Well, I mean, at uh, first glance, it looks like Windows 3.1. Now we need to type uh, the computer name. And also we can change our language. I mean, that's those are those are the new things. Uh, the language option is pretty cool. I mean, if you know any of these languages, I guess we won't set up network or printers. Then it starts installing Windows NT 3.1. Up here it says uh, the what are the new features of Windows NT 3.1. But uh, set up this so quick, I can't. And it's over. Wow, that was so fast. Uh, password, can I have no password? Uh, I need the password, so let me type it. Okay, I now need to create a local account. So let me do that. Uh, yeah, sure, whatever. Oh, now I can change the date and time. I think everything's correct here. Okay, can I cheese this? Oh, yes, I can. And we are finally done. Now we just need to reboot and when we do that uh, we can choose if we want to go to Windows NT or MS-DOS. And uh, without any commands we are in. Well I need to press, press Ctrl Alt Delete, just give me a moment and now. After all time wasted on trying to install this Windows, let's see how revolutionary it is. And it's like Windows 3.1. So, uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Okay, I'm joking, <laughs> you know, they always say don't judge the book by its covers. So here we have the new folder, administrative tools, but first let's see what games it has. Well, free cell was added and I'm really confused. Okay, I'm really confused. But you know, that move is not allowed. Is this move allowed? Well, it isn't. I give up. Uh, here we have applications from older versions of Windows. In administrative tools we have new programs, so let's go one by one. First one is the user manager. Imagine it manages users. Wow, no way. 
so I can like create or delete new users etc. So let's call this user test. And with the introduction of users, every user can personalize its desktop how they want and also have preferred program layout. For example, if I change the background and use the designer window layout on the GenTech user and then I log off, uh, that is also a new feature, we will be redirected back to logon screen. Now I type the username and as you can see it, uh, it says the default program layout and default background. Ok, uh, time to go back to GenTech account. Uh, next on the list is a disk administrator and it shows us how many local disks we have and also the unpartitioned space of the hard disk. We can also delete uh, uh, partitions or create new. I can't merge them though. And uh, now the performance monitor. It shows us how many stress we put on the PC. For example, I can add it here to show the percentage uh, usage of processor. Then we have backup. I mean, it creates backups. What else is there to say? And in the event viewer. Okay, I don't know what that is. Now in the main folder we have mail and schedule plus, also Windows NT help. Also in the control panel uh, we, have a, we have a lot of new options like network, cursors, set, server, services, devices, system and UPS. In system we can change the boot up priority, it is nice that you, that you can change that. We can also change the cursors, I mean that is also nice. And also has the same system sounds like Windows 3.1. Windows NT 3.1 was a 32-32-bit operating system, while MS-DOS and Windows up to 3.1 were 16-bit. So does that mean that uh, NT 3.1 can't run DOS applications? Well, uh, if you go to the Applications folder and run QBasic, for example, it allows us to run it. Now, how do I create a hello program? Is it like this? Syntax error, I mean, of course. And there we go, it says hello. Also in accessories, a CD player and chat was added. And that is it, I mean. Here uh, you can actually see what version of Windows NT we are running. With the introduction of Windows NT 3.1, service packs became a thing which were updates that had bug fixes and uh, sometimes also added some new features. Windows NT 3.1 required for optimal performance whole 16 megabytes of RAM. It maybe sounds like nothing but in those days that was too much so that hindered its sales but i mean it was catered towards, towards businesses so who cares two more versions of windows uh, nt3 series uh, were released windows nt3.5 which added long file name support and its source code was uh, leaked this year and windows nt3.51 which added support uh, to PowerPC architecture. It was used uh, on uh, earlier Apple computers until 2006. Windows NT 3.51 was actually the last Windows that used the program manager interface. Every Windows NT 3 version had its workstation and server edition. We also shut down Windows similarly to Windows 3.1, but instead of close program manager, we click shutdown. Now it's writing uh, unsaved data to the disk and it says it's safe to turn off your computer. Now uh, we can restart it or just unplug it. Ok, I can't unplug it because this is installed on a virtual machine. 
So, uh, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.